What up guys? Good morning, it's B2. Hey, we are uh, making quite a bit of progress here in the Project Ozone 2, and uh, I figured I would upgrade you guys. We went to a non-hardcore overworld. Um, you can see uh, how many heads we have here. Uh, quite a few uh, collection. I think the first thing we did was make a bunch of osmium, or a bunch of cleavers, but anyway. Um, and the osmium one, believe it or not, is a plus 14. Uh, so I'm going to try and level it up and see what I can get through the level up stuff. But, um, hey, here's what we got going on, man. Um, let's uh, forget that we saw that for a second. We've got a lava farm down here, and that creates most of uh, most of our energy that we need. But we've also started, um, I don't want to give away too much of this, but we've also started messing with some solar power. Um, and honestly, like, it's got a long way to go. These tier twos are are just putting out, well right now as the light's going down, it's going down, but uh, 80 RF a tick is what these solar two panels do, um, and we can look at those through, uh, through the solar flux here. So there would be 80, generation 80 at full light, so as the light's going down, you can see here uh, 27%, and then it's going down with RF, so the less light, uh, the less you're going to generate, kind of the whole theory behind uh, solar power, right? Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to continue to upgrade these panels and, and move those along and, and, and make some energy using that. So what I've done in the meantime is store up some energy banks um, for when it gets to be nighttime. Uh, you can see how this cell is actually filling up even though it's, uh, the solar panels are going down, uh, as will this one once, once that fills up. So, um, And then, of course, we put a secondary over here to run the sieving. And that's what we're going to talk about is this auto-sieving. Um, one of the most important things you can do early game is to lock down uh, your your automatic finding of resources, I guess, is the best kind of way to put it. So so the uh, very uh, model 1.0 of this would be you hand sieving, right? Coming up to this guy right here, uh, right clicking it to action, gravel, and sorting out the gravel by the right click, right? So... Um, or left click, I'm sorry. Um, not really very efficient. It's a huge waste of your time. You stand there forever sieving. And anybody who's played a sky block game or uh, um, that sort of stuff knows that it's pr it's pretty brutal, man. So uh, that's version 1.0. And then as you get to version 2.0, you you kind of have like a hopper system set up and you got your auto sieve and you know you kind of start moving along. Um, but then you still have to put resources places and figure it out. Then you got to go hammer cobble to gravel, hammer, hammer gravel to sand, hammer sand to dust. And it just, it's crazy, man. So what we've done here is kind of the version 3.0 now is as you get along in your tech tree and you start to unlock stuff on your quest and uh, be able to build bigger things and find more resources, you can also start with some basic machinery. So the way we've done it is to show you... Um, kind of that next evolution, right? Not quite perfect setup. Um, you know, it'll it'll be there'll be another iteration of this to go to like I guess the 4.0, if you will, and it'll be automatic where the cobble comes into the um, you know the the pulverizers without the chest. But for right now, we we don't want to overwhelm. We've got a whole chest here to sieve. And the sieves aren't keeping up, so you can do all the upgrades into the sieves and slide in speed and fortune into these guys right here and kind of get the most out of your sieving. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to do is we'll put some upgrades in and stuff as, as we move along. So what we've done is just simply put in a hopper system. Um, I could actually take these chests out. We're never going to sort that much, but just for the sake of you know argument's sake, that's kind of how we have it now. Um, and then if you look at the pulverizer here... Um, it's full energy, but it would come in. Now, notice that there's a primary output and there's a secondary output. And this is where you're going to kind of run into trouble. And you can see how we've got extra item pipes in here. So what we did was we told it in here we want the gravel to come out on the green line, um, which is going to pull from this primary, right? If you look at your setup here, your primary is going to come out of the side. So your secondary is going to come out over here. Um, And it's just going to pull whatever is coming out of this yellow port, which is going to be uh, gravel up here and sand down there. So the gravel is going to come out the side. The sand's going to come out this side. But because it's all green line and green line's going into here, it's going to end up in this chest. So no matter which way you, you kind of set these up, just keep that in mind. Now over here, if you look, okay, we've got an output over here. 
of uh, gravel. Sorry. It's orange. This is the secondary that's going to come out of here, which is sand, uh, sand again. Sand's going to come out of this line and pop down. Now this is going to drop to the bottom, the red output, which is going to drop the gravel in here. The gravel is going to populate there, and then it's going to be sand here and dust here. And so, of course, we want the dust to come out. And uh, we've got the item thing set up right here to pull an extract, right? So pretty easy setup. If you look at it the way it's done here in the configuration, you can really flip these openings to be whatever color you want, right? Um, or you can even disable them, which I do on the bottoms of these. There's nothing coming out the bottom. So, And if you look up here, you, the same kind of setup, right? Gravel, and we're going to pull um, the secondary out and shoot the secondary, which is sand. And the bottom is going to drop down here. So um, um, gravel is going to drop into here and go to sand here. And it's going to uh, drop the secondary out again which is going to be dust and dust is going to come out this this pipe here and come down and because it's got it set to green arrow extract and green arrow in it's going to insert the dust into this box right here so uh, and then of the course at the bottom is just going to come out both ways uh, not a, wasn't really much to set here uh, and the dust will come out at the bottom level here so sand will go in there dust will come out here and then whatever side goes into the chest. So it's kind of convoluted a little bit. Um, you're going to have to get into there, build the pulverizer, learn how just the outputs work. Um, and then as far as, far as power goes, um, these leadstone flux ducts in this pack put out so much energy. If you look at it right here, um, the leadstone flux duct is going to put out 2,000 RF a tick. It's more than what's needed to run this. Now, is he down here looking at me? He is. Let's go ahead and level this guy up. I mean, one shot these guys? Yeah, I don't think it was. Uh, we got Alamite bow. So, we need to level up this bow, so <laughs> I want to get it for getting ghasts. I want to be able to one shot ghasts. Go pick up tears or whatever. So, there we go. Alright, cool. Uh, back to what we were saying is um, the next level is uh, hardened flux duct and that does 8,000 a tick and it's really not that expensive so if you look at the mats for this lead redstone glass simple easy peasy hardened flux duct you just need one invar and some more redstone and bam you're doing 8,000 RF a tick so um, I really should have just done this in hardened flux but I didn't know if this project was going to work so I just kind of wanted to eliminate one step and look at this see I want to point this out see how these <laughs> these two will actually meet up now, these energy conduits are kind of really cool. If you look at the conduits on here, so that out. conduit, um, look at that. Those are 30,000 a tick. Now, I know a lot of you guys have played other packs, but bang, look at that, 90,000, and the ender is 180,000 R of a tick. That is insane. That's That kind of energy is just easy, easy, easy. Um, so anyway, um, this is a kind of an important part of it, the sieving, right? Automatic sieve. So I got three set up. Now it's going to pull out of here because I've got it set up on a blue channel, right? And I've whitelisted dust, sand, and gravel. So it's going to come out. The arrow is pointing out. And then look at this one. This one is going to get a whitelist insert on the blue channel, gravel. So only gravel is going to go in there and get sorted out. Then in this one, you guessed it, sand on the insert. And finally, dust. Pretty simple. And you can see how it's sieving by itself. Um, that's another great point is that we build vertical and we always do vertical to um, to keep that chunk that we're in loaded, right? So instead of putting out 5 billion chunk loaders and lagging the server and causing all kinds of problems, you can see how we use the elevators and then this, the smeltery level and kind of like the entrance to our house. This is kind of our first level of automation and just ignore that. We're building QEDs and getting our tables set up and that'll be kind of a project. But we bring the lava in here, and we do kind of our basic level stuff in here. And we're running lava gins that are full and shoot energy out, right? So, and then we have this sieve set up on to do our manual stuff. If we're looking for something in particular, we can come in here and just sieve this out real quick. And, of course, another storage of, of items. So, um, and finally, at the bottom level, we're starting our AE 
um, down here and our assembly table comes down here and so we're building our chips or whatever and I'll go through this uh, in a separate video and AE in a separate video we'll probably separate these two functions out a little bit further instead of having them side by side but you know uh, to do a lot of the AE projects you need the chips and it's just easy to have the assembly table right in there so um, and then I guess you guys probably want to see the farming and uh, Batania so Batania is right up here um, and we have Zach is running Batania for us on the, this round. We kind of all take our turns doing a bunch of different stuff. Um, but for right now, he's running the Batania. And then Foose and, and him are sharing details uh, as far as the farming goes. And uh, you can see how we need to automate the farming and everything. So uh, definitely have only a couple of days on this server so far. Uh, so don't crucify us too much in the comments as to why we're manually doing stuff uh, in some of the locations. We'll automate that as time comes. So if you have any questions, just hit them in the comments page. Uh, I'm going to put the IP to the server on here. So it's, it's an open server. It's public. It uh, doesn't cost. You guys can all come on here. Just ask if you do. Um, claim your land so you don't get griefed. And then... Uh, and I'll do a short video on claiming land and stuff like that at one point as well. And then um, don't chunk load. Just kind of be respectful of the server. So hope you guys are doing well. Um, I will talk to you guys uh, in a couple of days. See ya.